Hello, beautiful makers. Welcome to episode 73 of Stitching the High Notes. My name is Joanna, and I am coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area, where I am a local singer, maker, businesswoman, sewer of project bags, and much more. This is my little corner of the interwebs where I share what I'm knitting and cross-stitching and sewing for the shop, um, and much more. And singing, of course, too, which is about to gear up and get started here. You can see what I'm up to on social media at on Instagram at Stitching the High Notes, and also on Facebook. We have a Facebook page uh, where, if you search for Stitching the High Notes, we're on there as well. And on Patreon as well, I just started a Patreon account with a growing community over there where as a thank you for your support um, for the business, the growing business, I have um, more behind the scenes videos, um, discounts to the shop and much more. So make sure to check us out there if you are interested in joining. Uh, links to everything are down below in the show notes, in the down bar down below as well as show notes um, about everything that I chat about today. And I have a lot to share with you. There has been a lot accomplished, I think, this past month, this October. Uh, today is October 20... I have to look. 28th. <laughs> We're in the final days of October. And um, yeah, it's been quite the month. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? As is tradition, we start each episode with tea time. Uh, it's been about three years since Stitching the High Notes started, and I, when I started, I was drinking Earl Grey all of the time, and then coffee was reintroduced into my life, for better or worse. I think for better, especially today. <laughs> so I am on my second cup of coffee. Um, it is Monday, October 28th, as I just said, um, so it's the morning before I head off to work. I wanted to visit with you all. It is a lovely day, minus all of the horrible smoke uh, coming from all of the fires in Northern California, which I'm sure many of you are aware of. So barring that, um, it's a beautiful fall day. Um, but we won't chat about that because this is the happy place. This is where we chat about all of the creative things that we are doing and pursuing um, and that I can share what I'm up to. So a few little announcements. Let me grab a little sip here. Grab your beverage of choice. Cheers. Mm -mm -mm. I love you coffee. Yes, I do sing to my beverages. <laughs> Um, so a few announcements to get out of the way here. Uh, the Pumpkin Mal Make Along is gearing up to end in a couple of days on Halloween. Uh, it has been so much fun. Uh, this is the fourth annual Pumpkin Mal that I co-host with my Pump Queen, my partner in crime, Gabby, of the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. It's to celebrate all things pumpkin related and fall related. You can knit, cross stitch, weave, sew, anything. Um, anything making related for the most part and it's so much fun. Uh, we have a finished objects thread and a cheddar thread in the Stitching the High Notes group over on Ravelry as well as in the Once Upon a Corgi uh, group as well and um, lots of fun chatting about our projects, what we like to do uh, for future pumpkin mouths. Um, yeah, and the finished object threads are so inspiring, so I encourage you to check those out. Links are down below in the show notes. Um, we have one more prize. I detailed a lot of the prizes that I've received. I think Gabby, I haven't seen her latest episode, I think she's detailed some of the prizes that she's received. Um, for the finished objects threads, which we'll be in the next uh, week or so, we'll be pulling um, for those prizes. So stay tuned for those winners. But when I was up visiting family a couple weeks ago, my mom generously donated this lovely pattern. So this will go to a winner, probably to somebody who cross stitched something. Um, and if there are no cross stitch finished um, objects, we might just pull from the chatter thread. Um, anybody who is cross-stitching. This is Thankful Quaker by Bent Creek. She accidentally got two of these patterns, I believe. So she 
generously donated one. So thank you so much, Mama. And I think I'm forgetting another donation, but I'll have all, I'm, I need to put all of the um, details in the chatter thread about the generous donations. So I'll be doing that soon. Check, uh, keep an eye out for that. And I think that's all of the announcements for now. I'll have some shop news later on in the episode, so stay tuned if you are interested in that. Some new bags that are coming to the shop on Saturday, November 2nd. So let's get started with some finished makes. Yes, finished makes. In the last episode, I mentioned that I wanted to do an impromptu, and it was literally on the spot I thought of it, block along and finish along for all of the dwindling projects that um, you and I <laughs> have that just needed the weaves, the ends woven in, the um, cross-stitch patterns put on sticky board, the or cross-stitch projects rather, um, things that just needed to be reblocked for the season. So, and, and several of you took part, which was so much fun. And a huge thank you to Ramona for your generous donation of patterns to everyone who took part. It was so much fun. Um, so I wanted to share some of those that I did. I didn't get to everything just because life happens, but I did get quite a lot done. The big one, if you follow me over on Instagram, you already saw, is I finally, blocked and woven the ends of my Road to Rhinebeck shawl, which I made a couple of years ago I finished. <laughs> I love it so much. It's by Mina Phillip of The Knitting Expat. Beautiful podcast and vlog. Love this so much. It's kind of warm here still today, so I won't wear this too long, but it's a giant shawl. It's super cozy. The yarn is by Once Upon a Corgi, so by Gabby. It's a 100% Polworth and uh, DK weight. The colors are, the orange is Pum Queen in honor of our pumpkin Mal. And then the kind of off-white, I'll show you kind of the detail. This is my favorite part right here, uh, is Bone of My Bone which is inspired by Outlander. Oh, and I love it so much. It actually works really well with this outfit, so. Might look up the weather if it's not, well, actually I don't wanna get smoke in it, so I won't wear it today, but, but, yes. And I talked a little bit on the weekly vlog on Patreon about why I think it took me a couple years to really finish it. Um, and part of it is there were some wonderful memories infused in this because I was knitting on it the last time I was able, the first time and last time I was able um, to go to Rhinebeck, which I hope to be going to next year, fingers crossed. Um, and um, so there's some beautiful memories infused in this. I was knitting on the hill after meeting so many of you and oh, it was, yes, but unfortunately, when I came back home, some things went down and there's some not so happy memories infused in it. So I think that's why it kind of sat. It was like, I didn't really want to wear something I had like conflicting vibes about. Do any of you have that? I know some other folks have talked about that. If they're knitting on something and something happens or like if they're pregnant and they have a lot of morning sickness. I know Jelly has talked about that of the knitting broomstick. Um, you just have to put it down because you don't want your beloved thing that you've been making and finding so much joy and release and relief in to have bad juju. <laughs> and I think it was time, things have, some chapters have closed recently and everything that I felt like I could wear this again. And the other part is that it's hardly ever cold enough out here where I live to wear such a warm shawl. But I think the more I do morning walks and stuff, it'll be something lovely to wear with a light jacket. And it's perfect and it's so pretty. I got lots of compliments when I did wear it that one day. <laughs> so that is the big kind of finished blocking make that I did. I'm so happy that I did that. 
Um, the other thing that I did was a very long coming finish hang, and there's still like a little bit more that needs to make it an FFO, as they say in the cross stitch world and quilting world too, I think. And that is that I finally put on sticky board my Leaves Turn Gold project that I started in 2003 <laughs> and finished, I think last year, I finally put the little button on here. So I've got it, it's still, yeah. So it's, I've got it on sticky board. I bought some acid-free sticky board from Joanne Fabrics the other day. This is an eight by 10, I think I have the little thing in here. An eight by 10 mounting board. It's not super, super sticky, which I guess is good because I still need to straighten it out a little bit, although I think it's supposed to be a little wibbly wobbly the way that the pattern is. The crease line, because of years of being <laughs> in the original Ziploc bag, is still there even though I steamed and everything. And it's a little wrinkly still, but I think that's because it's like on this burlapy um kind of linen i don't know if it says on the pattern what the linen is here because it was part of a kit let's take a look and see okay. 28 count amber linen from Wichelt imports there you go it came with all of the buttons except for i think the cat was missing and so that was kind of the first delay is that I had to special order the cat. I remember, uh, I think I got it from, I got this, I think, well, I got this from a stitch shop that's long since closed in Oklahoma where I went to grad school. And then I special ordered the cat from Needle in a Haystack, which is out here in Alameda when I was home on Christmas break or something. I love it. So I got the other day, this from Joanne Fabrics on sale. It's a magnetic back um, with a frame and I thought this would be perfect for many, many finished cross stitch projects and seasonal. So my goal is I still need to put some magnets on the back of this board. I thought I had some in a shower curtain liner that I'm using for something related to the shop to be talked about later <laughs> and um but i needed smaller ones and one more there were only three i think there were only three in that shower curtain so it'll just magnetize onto there like that and with the beauty of this board is i can do it either this way hanging up or this way hanging up depending on the orientation of the project that i do I really like it. It kind of goes with my decor, which is kind of modern slash rustic y. <laughs> and um, it has this little thing on the back here that I have taped right now. I'm going to take this off. So if I ever want to hang it with this little strap, I can do that. But I'm really excited. I think it's a, it's a nice little addition to figure out where to hang it up. But so that's my. I'm gonna call it an FFO because I just gotta slap some magnets on there and I'm pretty proud. The back, I know some of y'all are gonna laugh at this. So the back right now is like straight up, <laughs> just taped up. I cut the corners and folded them in and all that stuff. And this part that's sticky is just the front. Um, I'm not a finisher. I do not enjoy the finishing process, hence why it's taking me so long to do this. Again, I was asking myself why. I'm trying to go through this process going, why is this is? And it's because it flares up the perfectionism in me. Finishing makes me kind of go, oh God, it's finished. It has to be perfect. Uh, whereas if I'm making it, there's you can always rip it out. You can always start again. You can always go, oh, I'm just not gonna put more time and effort into that and move on to the next thing. But if you finished it, you were, it needs to be finished and like look fantastic. And so 
it's very it was very interesting going through this process I was like rage finishing it at one point and then I went oh I need to do this right and do any of you have that as well I mean I, t I hear all the time cross stitchers talk about how they have a finisher <laughs> and they have that for quilts as well but there's something in me I was talking about this with my mom the other day where I feel like I need to do it from beginning to end and that's why I have so many unfinished things and by so many I mean like three things hanging around but yeah so something to work through <laughs> the other cross stitch that I finished where did it go let me go find it hold on the other FFO that I did is my Find the Witch Within. So it's fully mounted, but I still need to blanket stitch the back felt on. So it'll go on the back like this. And I had a lot of issues with the way, just me personally, I think, the way that the written instructions were for finishing the back, um, mainly because I had never done it before. But YouTube to the rescue, and I looked up several different um, tutorials and different ways to do it. I'll show you the ones that I found. I'm sure there might even be better ones out there, but these were the first ones that popped up that looked really good. So I, so I started, okay, so I started doing the running stitch around and then you cinch it together. But the way that this Ada linen is, is really stiff. So I found another tutorial where you do it like spider web style. And you, so I still kind of have the running stitch in there. But then you kind of go from one corner to the other to like ensure that these bits are coming in. So they're doing that now. And then I will plop this guy on and blanket stitch it around so that there's a flat surface and I can kind of get these kind of one still popping up down right now the way it's hanging up over by above my desk and I love it it's so simple but it still makes a statement my favorite kind of decor and um, I'm gonna have it up year-round <laughs> I love it so much uh, I did it wrong initially where I cut out the I misread it and I cut out like the batting for the inside, which I think people do do, and then you kind of encase it in with the cinching like this, and then you, and then you do that. So I was doing it in all kinds of weird ways, and I was starting to like rage finish, and then I went, oh, slow your roll, watch some YouTube videos, and just, you know, you're learning, I'm learning, I gotta learn how to do this, it's a different skill than cross stitching, so patience in your perfectionism making peace with it because it's there it will always be there it's just a matter of pushing through it not letting it win the day So I think that's it for my finished mix but I have a lot of things on the needles and in the hand because it's on a hoop for cross stitching so let me grab those and show you the first make in progress that I have is almost finished but I wanted to cast on something else um, for the pumpkin mouth so hence why it's not a finished make it's another wondrous dishcloth Ta -da! this is a pattern by jewels of so sweet violet you can find the pattern over on Ravelry and I'm loving it. I have one that I've been using. They are fantastic. I've been converting over to zero waste um, and low waste products. I'm making the journey towards um, zero waste. Um, and I realized I need a couple more of these in rotation. I just have to do, I think, one or two more stockinette um, rounds and then I will Kitchener stitch off the top. I'm using little 25 gram balls, so they're perfect for one dish cloth, of Sheepy's Katona, which is a 100% mercurized cotton base. 
And I got a bunch of these in different little kind of pastel muted rainbow colors, uh, two of each, so I can make a set for me and eventually a set for mom or my sister, depending on who wants it <laughs> when they move into their new place. Um, new places. So, yeah, so that's the first little make in progress. The next one I cast on yesterday. I did a swatch, or this weekend rather. I did a swatch for the Pumpkin Spice Mittens. Finally, after three years or two years of talking about them. Uh, and I thought, okay, let's just do this. So I did a gauge swatch. I steam blocked it. It steam blocked beautifully and I love that. Oh, I love that sheepy smell. I'm using um, some yarn that was gifted to me by Patricia of Knitography. And hi Patricia if you're watching this. Um, when I was at Rhinebeck in 2017 and I'm using Rauma Garn, Fingol Garn, in the colors I think 434 and 401. I think that's what they are. So basically burnt orange and this cream color as well. And before I show you the little bit that I've cast on so far, my gauge swatch journey is that I did initially two big of needles. I did size US 4 for these, which was way too big. And I did, what did I do here? Size three, size three millimeter on the top and size 2.5 millimeter for the bottom. And I'm still a little bit too big on this bottom one, but when I do color work, it's gonna be tighter and it'll be spot on. So I've decided for the cuff to use 2.25 millimeter and for the um, rest of the mitten, 2.5 millimeter. And I'm doing magic loop. And this is what I've cast on. Sorry, it's color work, so it's all over the place. Ta -da! <laughs> the little cuff kind of part for down here. And then I will switch to the larger needles. So these are on 2.25 millimeter right now. And then I'll switch to the larger ones um, when I start the color work minton. Yay! So I'll probably, I'm just gonna keep these by my little side over here and work on them during November. Love them. I, um, and I have them right now. I think I'm gonna need a bigger bag here, but I've got everything right now in this lovely Halloween inspired bag, which one of you lovely viewers sent to me many years ago and I apologize, I can't remember who it is. If it was you, let me know. And it's like this really cute little drawstring bag. It's perfect. For the gauge swatch, I wanted to share this tool. Many of you might already know about it. This is um, by Ann Bud Knits and it's um, a gauge ruler. And so I don't know if you could see, it's great because you can just line up your stitches to these kind of stitches written on the ruler here. And that's how you can tell, that's one way you can tell how many stitches per inch that you have. And then it's also a ruler, so you can also measure it out as well. So I got 7.5 stitches with a 2.5 millimeter. What I needed was uh, eight or 8.5 for the size mittens that I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing the women's teen size. I have this printed out here. I'm gonna be doing, yeah, the women's or the teen women's small size. Um, so it might still be a little, a little bit big, but I don't have those needles and frankly, I'm not gonna be wearing these that much, so. We'll see how it goes. But again, I, I knit significantly tighter with color work. Um, not significant, like so that the color work is still laying flat and everything, but it is tighter, which is pretty common. So that's uh, another make in progress. I'm gonna put that in my little, little 
stool over there. The other thing that I've been doing, and then I have a cross stitch one to show you too, is my droplet capelet, which has made a lot of progress. I've got little needle minder things here all over the place, hold on. So it's in the round, so it's a little tricky to show you. But let me make sure I don't come off my needles. Here it is. So this is the collar. And then I am increasing on one side of the round so that it makes this great angular droplet capelet, hence the name. Oh, I love it so much. I love the pattern. I'll try to show you here. It's a beautiful, beautiful, simple lacework pattern. I'm using Shibui Knits in the staccato base in the tar colorway. And let me see if I have a little thing here. Here it is. It's a 70% superwash merino and 30% silk base. It's glorious. I'm on the second ball of four that I purchased for this project. See that sheen? It's got like this beautiful like little halo, but also this beautiful sheen to the yarn. It's gorgeous. My little progress keeper is by Sucre Sucre Miniatures. <laughs> and for the Harry Potter fans out there, you could tell it's a Tom Riddle journal with a Baslix, Bas, I can never say that name, Baslick tooth. Thought it was kind of Halloween-y, so I put it on there. And my round marker is a beautiful stitch marker, part of a set, I think from her winter, set by Jules of So Sweet Violet. I love her stitch markers. The needles I'm using are, um, oh, and I didn't tell you the needles for the other ones, but the size is, I wanna say a three, yeah, US three. I'm using my interchangeable carbons, good old trusty carbons. For the other um, projects I'm using, I think one is um, for the Wondrous Dish cloth, it's also carbons, my interchangeable. And for the mittens, I'm using um, two different size pairs of Addy Turbo sock rockets. So there you go. I love it. And I've got it in one of my Stitching the High Notes bags from last spring, I believe. It just kind of works. And I think, again, I'm also gonna have to move this to a larger bag um, as it grows. But right now it's pretty comfortable in there. This is a, this is my drawstring size bag and it'll fit. Oh yeah, I think like if I get even further, it'll go. It gets like a good size regular shawl uh, project in there. So that's my knitting. And then for cross stitching, where is it, where is it? For cross stitching, I am doing my playing with jacks. I've gotten pretty far. So I'm stitching in hand. I love it. I looked up to the tutorial by the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch that they did um, of how they stitch in hand. They stitch right to left where I'm used to when I'm doing punch punch method, um, knitting or stitching. See, he's always making the gear shift from talking about one thing to the other. <laughs> um, stitching right to, or left to right. Um, but once I got a hang of it, I'm flying like the wind. It is definitely faster. It's very similar to continental and English knitting. They both work, whatever your muscle memory works, but yeah, you know, one is a little bit faster than the other, I have to say. But here's the pattern that I'm making. And by the Cricut Collection, and I'm gonna be swapping out this jack-o'-lantern with the forest um, pattern that comes with it, um, an alternate um, pumpkin pattern. So then it's kind of more evergreen fall um, for the decor, and I can slap it up on the little thing or do something different, or maybe frame it. 
and I have this right now. I'm showing the pattern, so I don't wanna, cause I look at the pattern through, <laughs> through the window. Um, this is in kind of a prototype bag, so don't look too closely uh, by me last year by stitching the high notes. And it's great because there are so many colors <laughs> for this pattern. And luckily, this fits perfectly in this well padded little um, project bag. But let's get to the stitching. Sorry, I'm like rambling, I'm rambling. So I'm stitching in hand. Here you go, isn't it so good? So I've done quite a bit since you guys saw it last. I think it was just the border and the beginning of this little stem. And I'm just making my way down this first pumpkin and then the beginning of this next pumpkin and the bottom border. And then I'm gonna chop off, uh, leaving a, what is that, a three inch? I can't, I have like a little um, ruler corner ruler um chop off the bottom here so i don't have all this excess um hanging on my belly <laughs> when i'm stitching i use this needle minder off and on while i'm stitching but um usually i've been taking it off but i put it on there when i am done stitching um that is by beautiful abby of top knot stitcher she has a gorgeous floss tube channel and she is fantastic. And she sells needle minders and all kinds of tools in her Etsy shop. And this is a quote from Anna Green Gables. It says, I'm so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers. It's so true. I love this. I love it even more than the photo, this pattern. I think that seems to be a very common theme with cross stitch patterns, which is very interesting, where you're just not super into it somehow. I don't know if it's the photography. It's very hard to photograph cross stitch, I find. Let me know if you find the same. But the pattern it just is reminiscent of for my Quaker heritage, um, many of my family most of my family, especially on my father's side, were Quakers or are Quakers, and that Southwest kind of feel to it as well. So yeah, I'm really, really digging it. So I've been grabbing this when there's good morning light, like right now, usually before I head to work. Um, I've taken it to work with me a couple of times. Before the fire started, I was uh, stitching outside on the lawn, and it was just lovely, or in my little chair that I have it by my desk. And um, yeah, so it's been, it's been fantastic stitching on this little guy. So those I think are all of my makes in progress. I kind of mashed up cross stitch corner with all of the makes in progress this time, which will bring me to a little bit of quick shop news. Let me go grab all the bags, which will be in the shop on November 2nd. So excited. All right, so this Saturday at 10 a.m., there'll be a bunch of new bags in the shop. Um, first and foremost, a restocking of Cozy Autumn bags, which I'm so happy so many of you are enjoying. Um, so upon popular demand, I will be restocking in all four bag designs, needlework, large needlework, drawstring, as well as sweater size bags. Um, oh, I'm just so happy to bring that back. And then I have some Christmas themed or holiday themed um, bags. The first of which, I love so much. This gorgeous, gorgeous fabric that I'm calling Cozy Christmas, because it's cozy. And it's another gorgeous fabric from uh, Spoonflower. That's where I got the Cozy Autumn fabric. And then I paired it with this beautiful linen, it's kind of like a linen cotton blend. I need to look at the makeup. But I don't know if you can see, it sparkles. It's got like some gold red sparkles in it. So it's perfect for this holiday themed fabric. It's so festive. It made my heart sing when I was pairing it together at Stone Mountain and Daughter where I got the bottom fabric. 
I love it so much. So I will have this, which has little snowmen and mittens and tea and hot cocoa and cookies and deer. It's beautiful. I'll have this in drawstring like this. Beautiful drawstring size bags with a cotton twill. And all of them are have this simple, I love using this simple cotton um, lining inside. And they are stamped with my logo as well. So I'll have these in drawstring with quilt batting inside as well. And I will have it in the super large sweater size bags, which are also working really well for um, scrappy blanket projects. And also thanks to Connie, hi Connie, um, who sent me a photo that I'll show here. She got a cozy autumn sweater size bag and it fit her scrolled up um, cross stitch fabric or cross stitch project perfectly. Um, I'll have the dimensions down below because I think she shared with, um, with me. But, so if you need something for a scrolled up large cross stitch project as well, these are perfect for it. They come with a little handle, they're zippered and they have zipper tabs um, on the sides. Also lined with this simple fabric and stamped inside as well. And then for needlework, I will have it in the classic size and I need to re-iron. <laughs> the lining inside but the classic sized needlework bag which is perfect for kind of your standard needlework project it'll fit an eight by eight eight by eight q snap very very easily and it also has cushy quilt batting so that your frames are protected uh, with a 100 percent recyclable um, vinyl window and zippered and stamped as well and last but not least, the large size. We'll have a few of these in the shop as well. The large size cross stitch bags, which um, fit, I am not remembering the size of the hoop, but I'll have it down here. And it's on the um, product page as well. Um, but these are for your like super large projects. And also stamped inside as well. Those, those are the cozy Christmas bags. So those will be coming to the shop. And then I have also the last kind of collection for this update is this fabric. I found this at Joann's and it made my heart sing, which is always my, um, it has to make my heart sing in order to get the <laughs> fabric. It uh, is music carols, Christmas carols. So I'm calling this vintage carols. I It reminds me of Dickens Fair, which I go to every year um, out here in the Bay Area. And it has uh, Joy to the World and Jingle Bells, these beautiful little candy canes and little cardinals on there as well. Oh, I love it so much. So I will have this in drawstring. It has a beautiful cream color to keep with the vintage vibe lining and a stamp as well. And cotton, cream colored cotton drawstrings. And I will have it of course in the sweater size as well with the same sparkly bottom. I don't know if something doesn't say Christmas. I don't know what does, if this doesn't say Christmas. It also will have the cream lining and the stamp. Oh, I love it. And this will have a cream um, zipper. And I thought I paired it great with the little tabs on here. And then it will also be in cross stitch bags, but as you will see, these are not done yet. <laughs> and that is because I was mid making them all. And 
I paired it with the cream colored zipper and I thought, that doesn't look right. And I remembered I had some red, but in the wrong size, so I had to make an order. And look how good that looks. So yeah, these will be in the ready to go on November 2nd, but um, they're a little bit delayed because I'm waiting on my order of larger sized zippers. Because look how good that looks. That looks so good. Super Christmassy. So vintage Christmas carols, vintage carols. I can't, I can't decide that. So lots of fun. So that's what will be coming to the shop this Saturday. And um, there's some fun uh, progress keepers or stitch markers still in the shop as well. Uh, a lot of them are Christmas themed. I just sent out an order today actually for some. And um, the next update after that will be December 7th, I believe. So I do updates every first Saturday of the month at 10 a.m. And I'm not going to be restocking because I'm gonna put actually quite a bit in this update on November 2nd. Um, so then December 7th, that will be the next restocking and it will be the last one of the calendar year, which is crazy, so that I can make sure I I'm all done and ready to enjoy um, December to its fullest. I'll be full with vlogmasing. I can't wait for vlogmas. And lots of singing um, for my job with the symphony. I'm a member of the symphony chorus. And um, yeah, just make sure I leave some time for just making stuff on my own and with family. I have to say working on all of these, this will go into backstage chatter here. I'm gonna go, go get comfortable and grab my coffee. Um, working on these bags, I am really ready for the holidays. <laughs> it's the earliest I've ever been ready. Um, I think it's just the nature of having a business. You always have to be at least a month or a couple months ahead of the game, so to speak. Um, but I'm also just ready for that cozy family time and there's some really fun things coming up ahead with the symphony like I mentioned we're doing um some really fun concerts we're doing the movie the music live music to the movie it's a wonderful life we're doing um messiah of course every year and we're doing um Twas the Night, which we haven't done that in a, quite some time. When I first started with the symphony, it was just maybe 16 of us, uh, the professional singers singing on stage and leading the whole symphony hall in Christmas carols. Um, and this time I think more of the chorus is gonna be taking part as well as our amateur community chorus. So everybody can sing along and it'll be so much fun. And then the return of Charlie Brown Christmas. I am so happy. Oh, go online and check it out because I've seen the show now. We took a break from it last year, which I think was good, but we've done it for maybe five years now, I think. I can, I don't get sick of it. I love it so much. We, the chorus doesn't have a ton, which maybe is why I love it so much. Um, we sing Christmas stuff with the brass of the symphony beforehand and families come and groups of friends come who have been enjoying the delights of the season, meaning drinking their little tushies off. <laughs> and and uh, we sing Christmas carols and then there's this Charlie Brown Christmas kind of pageant style telling of the store of the movie so they'll have like the background the gorgeous artwork from the animated special and then they'll have kids reading off the dialogue uh, as well as a narrator a male adult narrator and then there are dancers that play each character and they dance this choreography to the music that the symphony is playing live. And the chorus we just sing in the beginning as they're ice skating, um, Christmas time is here, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Frog in the morning. So 
yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to it. It just, you cannot not be in a good mood after seeing that show. And I cry every single time. It's when they decorate the little Gimpy tree. <laughs> it's so great. So goodness, I'm rambling, but yes. I did also want to share with you some books because so many of you have been asking like, what are you reading? Because I've been a voracious knitter. Knitter? Knitter? That was like a mashup of reader and knitter. <laughs> I mean, I guess I am that, but um, yeah, I've been reading my little tushy off this year and it's been so, it's been so great. It, it feels like I'm coming back into old school Joanna. I don't know. Old school Joanna is becoming new school Joanna. <laughs> anyway, I better wrap this up soon. Um, so, books that I've been reading. I finished Air of Fire last week and over the weekend. Something came in me. I think I just needed something fantasy and totally out of this world just to like escape and just totally get immersed into a story and in Sarah J Mass style, I've always said Moss, but it's Mass style, she kicks it into high gear about halfway through the book and then you can't put it down. So I finished that. I talked to Gabby who's in love with the Throne of Glass series, which is what this book is from. This is the third book from um, that series. And we were going back and forth and talking about it. And she's like, you have to start reading the next one. So I'm already on to the fourth book, which is, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll have it down here. Um, and I'm alternating between Audible and reading on my Kindle Paperwhite, which is great. It works really, really well. I did start The Water Dancer, um, but I just needed something totally escapist and this is so such a good book i didn't want to just be reading it i really want to make sure i'm in a very focused place when i'm reading the book so i've put it on the back burner for now but it is so good i highly highly recommend it everything i have is on goodreads if you want to come follow me over there if you're on goodreads i'll have a link down below and then I started to read Practical Magic this month uh, for the holiday season as well as a holiday or a Halloween readathon that the Twisted Stitches podcast and um, Kilt Craft podcast are hosting. And um, I'm going to pick that up, I think, this week because um, of Halloween if, if I don't get totally immersed again into the Throne of Glass series, which might be the case. We'll see. I just have that on Kindle Paperwhite. Um, and I don't really want to do Audible for it. So I think because I'm of the movie, I just have their voices in my head. So it would just be really jarring to hear somebody else's voices. Although the book is so different and so much better than the movie. It's such a better story. So I don't know what they did to that story, but anyway. <laughs> Um, let's see what else. That's kind of all. I kind of want to clean up my Goodreads queue, a la the Ravelry queue. And I just realized you can put things in order um, of one through whatever. Because the things that are like on the top of my queue list are from like 2014. And some of them I can get rid of. I'm not really into anymore. So that might be like a little side project to kind of palette cleanser project this week. And I started, oh, I am reading the, off and on, it's more of a workbook, The Artist Way. The Artist's Way. Let me grab it. Hold on. This fabulous book and resource. So this is by Julia Cameron. It came out 25 years ago or so. This is the 25th anniversary edition. I love it because the margins are quite rough. Um, wide so it, as you can see it definitely is a workbook so you can fill things out and take notes there's quotes on the sides hugely hugely inspiring I started this because I am doing morning pages um, which is writing three pages first thing in the morning almost the first thing that you do when you get out of bed all just top of mind stuff that comes to your head. It could be your grocery list. It could be some really deep things happening, your dreams, 
anything, even if you just write, I have nothing to write, I have nothing to write, I have nothing to write, it's to keep that flow happening for writing and for creativity and for uh, non-judgmental um, kind of mindset just that it's a safe place to just kind of put everything. So I've been doing that every morning. Um, some days it's maybe a page, most days it's, I can make it to about three. I just have to carve out like about half an hour. I'm doing it on my iPad um, with my little Apple Pencil and then I copy and paste um, the pages into my password protected <laughs> um, uh, journal that I have. And it's been transformative. I'm not gonna lie. It's been transformative. I'm still kind of figuring out why. I'm part of an online community being hosted by um, me and Orla by Sarah Tasker, who's fantastic. I will put down links to her website down below. Um, and that has been really, really interesting to see people who are artists themselves, also um, people who are writers, people who are just trying to find the artistic spirit, even if they're not a professional artist. Um, and what they're finding out is they do this exercise every morning. Um, there are other things in this book, like an artist date that you take yourself on solo. You go to like a gallery or something and kind of what you learn. Um, but again, I'm not too far into the book as you can see. Um, it is a workbook, so it's it's something I need to carve out uh, an hour every few days to kind of read through. I was starting to take it during my lunch hour um, to work on, but I'm finding like I really need to reset my batteries during my lunch hour because I'm doing some really detailed oriented work um, right now. And um, so knitting and cross stitching is the way to go. Not necessarily deep diving into my creative spiritual path. <laughs> so definitely check this out if it's something that sounds interesting to you. It's um, kind of the hook line for it is a spiritual path to higher creativity. Um, I mean, it's got Martin Scorsese and Anne Lamont and Elizabeth Gilbert have little forewords. It's a seminal book on the subject of creativity, um, perhaps even more vital in today's cultural climate than when it was first published 25 years ago. I definitely would agree with that. So, very, very good. I think that is quite enough for this episode. <laughs> I have so enjoyed visiting with you all. A huge thank you to all of you who have come back um, to watch and visit, as well as a big welcome. I always forget to do this at the very beginning, but a huge welcome to everybody if this was your first episode and you made it all the way through till the end. Um, and a huge, huge thank you to my Patreons, my patrons. I am so, so, so grateful for you all. And thank you so much to the amazing creators for your beautiful pledge each month. I'm very, very grateful. So, um, yes, if you are interested in being part of that community, do check it out. Again, there's a link down below. And you can find me on Instagram, Stitching the High Notes, as well as on Facebook, which is growing there as well, which is really, really cool. I better head off to, ooh, yeah, I better head off to work. <laughs> grab some breakfast maybe another I'll get a cup of coffee to go and I've got my mask for the fires <laughs> sad note but I hope you all are well I hope you are staying safe if you are here in California I hope you are having a wonderful fall if you are here in the northern hemisphere if you are in the southern hemisphere gearing up for summertime it's spring I guess right now and maybe summertime that you're doing lots of making that you're taking time to be creative and to live a slow intentional life as we all I know are trying to do so many hugs and kisses to you all and I will talk to you soon.